welcome to the Author Spotlight series at Spark Creativity. In this series, you'll hear from authors sharing their work directly into your classroom. So sit back and listen in. Today, we're hearing from Nancy Tandon, reading from her book, The Way I Say It. Nancy has worked as an elementary school teacher, a speech-language pathologist, and an adjunct professor of phonetics and child language development, all of which helped plant seeds for stories about awesome kids doing brave things. Well, welcome to the show, Nancy. It's such a pleasure to have you here. Thank you very much. It's a joy to be here with you. Before we dive into your book, I'm hoping you could just take a minute to introduce yourself and the work you're going to be reading. Thank you. My name is Nancy Tandon, and I am the middle grade author of two novels. One is called The Way I Say It, and the other is called The Ghost of Spruce Point. And this morning, I'm going to be reading to you from The Way I Say It, which was my debut novel. That means it was my very first book that I had published. So it's very special to me. Fantastic. Well, I'm really excited and I want to just give you the mic. Wonderful. It's funny that you say give you the mic because the first sentence of the book mentions a microphone, Uh the third (laughs) sentence of the book. So listen carefully, kids. (laughs) The way I say it, let me tell you a little about the book. It's about a 12-year-old boy named Rory who can't say his R sounds. And he thinks that's his biggest problem until his ex-best friend Brent is in a terrible accident and suffers a brain injury. And when Brent returns to school, he becomes the target of the same kind of bad treatment Rory has had to endure. The question of the book then becomes, should Rory stand up for his old friend, even though Brent never did that for him? So this book is based on my time um, working as a speech language pathologist. And when I sat down to write the book, I thought, what would be the worst name you could give a kid who hadn't developed his R sound yet? The R sound is one of the later developing sounds. And poor Rory was born. But he's a really cool kid, and I'm going to introduce him to you now. Chapter one. Hello, my name is. I can't say my name. Not because it's a secret or anything. Honestly, I'd shout it into a microphone right now if I could. I'd give up anything to be able to do that. Even my guitar playing fingertip calluses, which took like a million hours to get. The first half million hours hurt. A lot. Go ahead, introduce yourself and tell us one fun thing you did this summer, Mrs. Nash repeats, as if I'm not answering because I forgot the instructions. Standing in front of the class, I grip and release the fabric of my mesh shorts. I try to take a deep breath, but manage only a fluttery gulp. I look toward the back of the room and focus on the crammed bookshelf and the ripped beanbag chair in front of it. Anything but all the faces staring at me, waiting. I glance at the clock. When the second hand reaches the 10, I'll do it. No, I've been already been up here too long. Get it over with now. Big breath, tense tongue muscles, squeeze the side edges hard against my teeth. I'm worry. I push the words out on a rush of air. Mrs. Nash bunches up her eyebrows and flicks her fingers through her short, spiky hair taking forever to scan the class list before she looks back up. She says, oh, Rory, here you are, Rory Mitchell. Someone whispers, the already warm room suddenly seems 10 degrees hotter. Well, Rory, she says, emphasizing the two R's as if that will help me say them better. What did you do for fun this summer? My mind starts to buzz like an amplifier set at max sound. I was hoping to skip this part. As nervous as I've been about starting a new school, I figured that by sixth grade, the teachers would have knocked this question off their playlists. I pretend to clear my throat, and the cough comes out as a dry little squeak. The clock ticks. Say something. Say something. Just go with your gut. That's what my guitar teacher at music and arts camp always said when we were improvising. But I can't. I have to carefully choose what I say next. I force my brain to work, scanning for R's and skipping any idea that has one. Riding my bike, running my first 5K, 
going to Rhode Island. Come on, something without an R. Kids shift in their seats and the whispers spread. Let's give Rory our full attention, please, says Mrs. Nash. Not helpful. I went to the beach, I managed to blurt out. Mrs. Nash looks as relieved as I am when I'm done, and Melanie Franklin, whose desk is next to mine, stands up to take her turn. We've been in the same class since third grade, and her hairstyle has never changed. Two long, straight braids every day. She won our school spelling bee in fourth and fifth grade. The girl is a human spell check. From the safety of my seat, I watch as the other kids take their turns, parading to the front of the room in new sneakers and stiff first day clothes. The room smells like clean laundry. Most girls are wearing boots and sweaters, even though the real fall weather won't start for a while. It's like watching a back to school episode of the Fashion Network show, Who, What, Where, When, Why, that mom pretends not to be obsessed with. We're coming to you live from Kensington Middle School in Lakeville, Connecticut. Or should I say Perfectville, Bob? Ha, ha, ha. Look at all these wonderful students in the exact right clothes and listen to their impeccable speech. Not one of them has any problem saying their own name. Well, almost none of them. Cut to close up of my mouth. Back to you in the studio, Bob. At least my turn is over and I have lunch with Jet and Tyson to look forward to. After today, maybe I won't be so freaked out about meeting new people. At least that's what I tell myself. The problem is, I don't really believe it. I'm supposed to go with my gut, right? Well, mine is seriously considering asking to be homeschooled. Thank you so much, Nancy. (laughs) What a great cliffhanger there. (laughs) 